Okay, today what I'd like to talk about is the Scan Gauge 2. This has multiple purposes. It's actually a really good gauge um, and what we can do with it. I'm going to start, as I get phone calls or people asking me, uh, emails, different stuff, asking me what's wrong with the truck. Um, I know a VCM and IDS is too expensive. I mean, nobody's going to be investing thousands of dollars to do it. But here, for $159 from AutoZone, and if you get one from the AutoZone, you can have it instantly, and you, but you'll have to program it. Because remember, they've made this to work. It doesn't matter if it's an Audi, a Subaru, a Ford, a Chevy, or anything else. This is made to communicate with it. And if you have a gas engine, well, I don't care. Then we're not talking about it. But some of the things it can do, it can scan. It can get you generic codes, your global codes that's with it. Uh, if your check engine light's on, it'll, it'll find that. It, it can read the codes that's causing your check engine light to come on. If it's uh, you're going to go have it smogged and you're not sure if it's ready because there's also uh, the monitors have to run. So if you just try to clear your codes and you know you try to fool the the smog guy, it, that doesn't work. You have to make sure that the monitors run and it's ready the, to to be um, smogged. So you can check all that with it. There's uh, other uh, things like for as using it as for usefulness for with your fuel. It can tell you your fuel economy, fuel used. You can calculate. The, your miles into it, it'll uh, go with your odometer and check that. It can uh, you put in the cost of the fuel in it. It can tell you how much it costs you, you know, for every mile used. It gives you average speed. There's all kinds of stuff with that, but that's not what I want to go over with it. Um, that's just something that's pretty cool with a gauge. What I want to cover with it is how are we going to use this now as a diagnostic tool? It's it, we can use it to diagnose your vehicle, and we can use it to for preventive maintenance because if there's a lot of stuff that if we watch and with a little bit of education here you'll be able to start pretty much you can tell what's wrong with your truck if something's going on with it and what what to look for but today what i want to cover is if you went down well if you if you want to get one that's just a plug and play order it from bulletproof diesel just go on there get theirs you pay a little more but it comes with all the pids all the selections already pre-programmed for a diesel and you can use it if you want to get one today versus waiting or save a little bit of money, just go down to AutoZone or your local place. You can check it out, buy it online, which however you want to do it. And you, but you will have to program it, and that's what I want to walk you through because it's it's a little bit. I don't know if I would say overwhelming, but when you get it, you get it with the manual. I, I blew up the pages from the uh, from the web to make them a little bit larger. But when you get it, there's a procedure you have to go through, and to be honest with you. I had to ask my kid how to do it. So what the um, instead of sitting there showing all the different inputs, what to hit, I'm going to try to walk through it. But just in case, if I don't cover it well enough or you can't, you're not sure what I'm saying, um, then this does come in your manual. And also remember, because computers don't speak English, the, they, they all have different protocols on what to what they use. Now, Ford and, and a lot of the other manufacturers now, they use what they call CAN. But there's different types. So, and if you go to the web page, or if you go with the manual, it'll tell you what type you get, what what, what you have. So, if you have a 7.3, you need to set it for the PWM. But mostly with the 6.0 and the 6.4, we're going to go with a CAN SF. So, this is the one that we're going to use. Now, that's what I want to show you what to do. And also, depending on which we call them PIDs, but which sensors you want to monitor. They're all listed here, the ones that it's available. It, it, everyone that's important, it's here. So it's pretty good. You want to look at TransTemp. You want to look at uh, Torque Converter and all these different ones. It's, it's all there. If you want to look at um, uh, engine oil temperature, injection pressure, fuel desired, volume fuel, fuel of used, exhaust back pressure, uh, manifold air temperature, the uh, FICA main power, of course, that's one that we need to do to diagnose it. Ficum logic power, it's pretty much battery power. Now the Ficum sync or the Ficum signals, another one that, that's necessary for diagnosing a crank no start. IPR duty cycle, that's your injection pressure regulator. We need to know that one so we know um, how hard your pump is working. Is your pump compensating for a leak? Is your pump getting weak? Um, what's going on with it? So IPR duty cycle is a very important one. And until I found this, I've never been able to I haven't found a tool that can do this other than the Ford IDS system. And, and also, not on that, I, I contacted ScanGage, and the customer service is great. 
So if you don't like the video or, or you're not sure with whatever, call the customer service and they'll help you out. They, they answered my emails. They've helped me out. It's all been pretty good. But also the uh, VGT duty cycle or your boost. Now the boost is a little bit different because it, it has to know your atmospheric pressure or you have to input what your um, what your at depending on the elevation what your um, uh, what what's what it's going to start with. But that's something that we can cover at a different time. You can see whatever else. Now, if you have a 6.4, you can also go in and look at your exhaust gas temperature sensors, and that's pretty good if you have a stalling issue or different stuff. Um, but anyhow, right now, and, and also another thing I like to mention, if you do program it, say you own multiple trucks or you have different stuff, as long as it's on the CAN network, if you program your engine oil temp, it's the same code that we would be inputting for the 6.0 or the 6.4. So as you take this from one car to the other, it works. And the same way too, if you take it on a trip and you want to take it from one truck to another or your car to your wife's car or your friend's car, it is just a plug and play. It's only when you get specific, when you want to watch different um, inputs that's pretty important on the diesels that it, that it gets to be where we have to do this. Otherwise, you won't need this. So anyhow, I'm going to try to walk you through and go ahead and program an input so we can um, start monitoring it on the truck and see what's going on. First thing we're going to want to do is plug it in, get it communicating. Okay, we've got it. Um, back to it. Now, this is the, uh, the home screen. Remember, you push here. It's home. Get you back to the beginning. So I'm going to go more, more, and you can see each one. It's communicating on the scan, on the CAN SF. So then from here, I go mode, over there, X gauge, because so I want to start using is, is the gauges. So X gauge, and I want to edit them because I want to add something. So X gauge, then edit. And now I have to find an empty slot. They do use zero as a value. So I have EOT on zero, ICP on one. Some of these are already programmed. Yours will come, you can start right there at zero and use it if it's empty. But I'm going to find an empty one. These are ones that I've already pre-programmed. And there's nine, as you see, it's empty. So now I've got X gauge on nine. I want to edit it. So I hit edit. Now it's asking me for my TXD. I go down here to my list on my chart here and I look it up, what I'm doing. So again, I want to do fan speed. So I go zero, I look it up, I go up is zero. Then I go over to enter my seven. So I go, I, I'm pushing up here until I get to the seven. Seven, and then since I've, I'm happy there, I go to my next position, and it's zero seven E. Now the numbers are the letters are down, so if we go to them quicker, you can scroll all the way through your numbers and go up, or you just go down for them. So I go zero seven E zero two two. Zero, nine, nine, then F. So I go right there to F. So now I have that entered on my TXD. Again, I got that from the chart, so I hit OK. Now it's asking me for my RXF number. I look over here, I've got zero. So I go to my next position. Go four, I'm just going up. Four. Next position is six, two, zero, five, zero, nine, zero, six. Nine, then F. That's the code for that. Then I hit OK. Now it's asking for my RXD on the chart. That's 3010. So I'm going 30 or 3, 0, 1, then the 0, so that's 10. Hit OK. Now it's asking for my MTH number. I look on the chart. This one's got lots of zeros, so it's going to be easy. So I've got zero, 
zero zero one and it's zero 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 four then the rest is zero so I'm all done there now I hit OK now it's asking me to name that so we can make up any name we want but the common uh, what it's known for is FSS for fan speed so I scroll through I have my F next space S F F my fault there E F then I'm going to go up to S now I have it named and that's all that it took so now in position number nine I have my fan speed I hit save and I'm done so I'm just going to exit because that's what I want to look at. I want to add it. Now let's um, go back to home screen. Let's go to gauge. Now when I'm on the gauge, these are ones that I've already had pre-programmed as far as like the IPR, the sync, ICP. And depending on what speed, let's say I want to have it up here in the top right or bottom left. I can keep scrolling through. Every time I hit it, it's going through available PIDs. I'm going until I see... fan speed now it's there and it's zero because the vehicle's not running so let me start it and there's my fan speed you can watch four at a time let's see We can sit there and watch the fan speed. We can look at ICP. And, and you can do it on the fly. We don't want to look at sync. Um, we want to look at oil temp. So we can just switch it. Now we can monitor different speeds or different sensors and inputs with it. So as you see, this is more than a toy. It is also a cool gadget. It's uh, Maybe I shouldn't call it a toy. It's a cool gadget because it's usefulness. Uh, I mean, it's cool to have. It's cool to look at. It's cool to use. Um, but not only that, this can literally keep you from breaking down or at least help you, aid you in not breaking down because as we go through and I make different videos with it, we'll always refer back to this one and then most of the time I'm going to assume you have this for $159 and a 6.0, you need this. So we'll go with um, assuming this and I'm going to start showing it as a diagnostic tool. I'm going to use it different times during work. I'm going to try to see how much of my own job I can use by just using this as a diagnostic tool. It's, we're going to monitor oil temp, coolant temp, find out restricted oil coolers. Uh, we're going to diagnose crank no starts with it by different inputs and um, use this and see how much of it I can actually get by with daily. And I'll make different videos with it. Um, another thing I want to show with it, if you don't want your cable here, you can unplug it. It does just have a regular Ethernet cable. So if you want to get an extension or a long one or do something else with it, you can. It also has a place on the back. So you can do that, and then you can run your wire, and you can, print it, you can mount it wherever you want to on the vehicle. If you want it sitting there, then you can do it. Just remember as you do it, as you have it, what do you want to use it for? Um, it has, like I said, it has a trip minder for your fuel. It has a lot of functions, but usually I use it as a gauge, and there you go. You can put it here. It comes with a uh, piece of Velcro where you can put it on the bottom there and mount it and have it. You can, wherever you want, on the vehicle, you decide where you want it. If you want it up here, cable kind of showing, that's up to you. That's not, that's own preference. My thing is to try to help it out, help you out to make it as a, uh, as a useful tool more than just a toy and uh, to keep you, when you're stuck and you call me up or you email me and ask me questions, hey, Ron, what's wrong with my vehicle? We're going to refer to this and we're going to find out what's wrong with your vehicle. Thank you.